I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Well, normally I start our recording sessions by asking you how you're doing, but I don't have to do that today. Because you don't care. Because... Because I don't care about you. <laughs> no. Because I just saw you in person. I know. Yeah, we had another, not quite as serendipitous like that Target time where we just totally accidentally right. saw each other and we happened to see like a few people that we knew that one day. But this day was a sort of pre-planned see each other at the coffee stand mm-hmm. um, kind of morning. It was really fun. I had an inkling of when they'd be there and Jam's wife, Emily, loves surprises and we don't see each other very often. So we masked up and went to the mug and saw each other. Should we hold up our mug cups and take a screenshot? Yep. (laughs) Okay. So that was a really great start to our morning and it was really Mm -hmm. fun to see you guys and to see your little man hanging out. And to do it in a way that felt safe and we were outside and everything. So it was really fun. And we supported a local business. Yeah. It would hit like all three or four important boxes for any hangout. Mm -hmm. Safe, um, fun, supporting local business, and coffee. I think those are the four boxes typically, right? Yeah, definitely. Coffee is definitely always a box for some of us (laughs) in this recording session. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was fun. On that theme, I decided our topic for today, everyone's about to think that we're doing coffee, but we're still not doing coffee yet. (laughs) But it's close. We are going to talk about caffeine. Oh, nice. And why caffeine makes us not sleepy. Nice. I I mean, as a lover of coffee, I know just a little bit about this and some of that could be wrong. Okay, great. Well, that's exciting. I want to, before we start, give a shout out to Austin F. Mm -hmm. He gave us this episode idea actually in person close to a year ago. Whoa. Mm -hmm. He's a a friend of ours, Austin, Mm -hmm. and he had the idea to share about this. And that's a very patient friend of the show, Austin F. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry it took us so long. I also want to give a shout out to a fellow graduate student, not my personal fellow graduate student, She doesn't work at UNT, but I stumbled upon her Twitter and her Instagram. Her Instagram is called Beth's Brain Bites, and she's a graduate student studying Alzheimer's. And she did a really cool infographic and a few tweets on Twitter about how caffeine works. And that also inspired me. And that information was very accurate, and it was boiled down in a way that made it really easy to present in this episode. So I used that information and I wanted to give her a shout out and we'll tag her when this episode comes out so that you guys can go check out her resources because she seems really awesome. And in our show notes, I also put a peer reviewed journal article that she contributed to as an author. So nice. She's, I like to confirm that people who say they're scientists on the internet are actually scientists on the internet Mm -hmm. (laughs) by checking out any literature that they've maybe contributed to. And so I found that from her and is an article about Alzheimer's. So that was pretty cool to find, you know, and, and I was really impressed with her infographic and she has a few of those on her Instagram as well. So nice. Yeah. So go check her out and we'll tag her as well. Yeah. She sounds legit. Yeah, she seemed legit to me, too. And I shot her a little direct message and told her that I was going to do something like this. So she seems really nice and cool. Awesome. Okay, so organic chemistry. We talk about it a lot, but I don't know that I've ever defined it for you. Right. Organic molecules are defined as those that contain carbon. And I would say generally they're primarily made up of carbon and hydro hydrogen. If there's no carbon, it's usually called an inorganic molecule. Okay. So a lot, like a lot, a lot of stuff in the world is made up of carbon-based molecules. So when you're saying there's carbon, it doesn't have, it's not like these are like cage-free, you know, free-range molecules. (laughs) Molecules? <laughs> yeah, not the stamp it on your groceries organic definition, but the carbon is present Okay. definition of organic molecules. And I think a lot of people know that already, 
Mm-hmm. But I just realized hmm, maybe I should clarify that. So caffeine is one of those organic molecules. Okay. It is made up of carbon. And when it goes into your body, it ends up in your brain. Nice. And there's other organic molecules floating around in your brain as well. Okay. One of those is known as adenosine. There are a lot of things that happen in your brain. So this is a very boiled down, very simplified version. I'm not a neuroscientist. I started studying neuroscience in college, but then I realized my true love was chemistry. So (laughs) I am aware very vaguely that this does not even begin to cover the majority of what happens in your brain. But I do know that adenosine is the thing that makes one of the things that makes us sleepy. Mm hmm. There are adenosine receptors in your brain. And when we need to take a nap or whatever, the adenosine will go find its adenosine receptors and then we'll start to feel sleepy. It's our body's signal to us that it's time for us to take a nap. Got it. Caffeine is similar in structure to adenosine. They have similar rings on them, shapes Mm -hmm. of rings. The way the molecules are built are similar. Mm Mm-hmm. So caffeine can come into your brain and block adenosine from getting to its receptors. Oh, interesting. So if the adenosine can't get to its receptors, we don't know that we Mm. need to take a nap. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I said, why does caffeine make us less sleepy? Is because it's really not making us more awake It's inhibiting us from knowing how sleepy we are. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's how caffeine makes you more awake. Huh. Dang, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I I remember reading some stuff about this, not as deep in the molecules, Mm -hmm. but I think it did mention adenosine. That's what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, adenosine. But it didn't give the clarity about the molecules being so similar I just remember it saying something like kind of like that last sentence you said, really just it prevents us from being aware that we should start feeling sleepy. Like it, right. It's not like it actually wakes us up. That was the, the part that I remember reading somewhere and, but didn't have a lot of, of deeper info about that. Right. Well, and it does do some other stuff. It's a little bit deeper. That's the basics that Beth shared on her Twitter. Mm Mm-hmm. But I found a video from the American Chemical Society that also talked about when caffeine enters your liver, it's broken down into three more organic molecules. Mm -hmm. And those are all very similar. They just basically get one little alteration where a carbon and three hydrogens are knocked off in different positions. The fancy names for them, I don't know if anyone would care, would be theobromine, paraxithine, and Theophylline, I think is how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And those are also molecules that will cause a response in your body. So one of them increases oxygen and nutrient flow to your brain. So that can contribute to you feeling more awake. One of them increases the rate of fat breakdown to fuel muscle activity in your body. Oh. And one of them increases your heart rate and your ability to concentrate. Mm Mm-hmm. So on the one hand, we have caffeine and probably some of these other molecules, although I'm not 100% sure because they all have very similar structures still, inhibiting your adenosine receptors. Mm -hmm. So you can't feel how sleepy you are. But also you're getting that added response of increased oxygen. You're getting increased rate of your fat breakdown. Your heart rate's increasing. And caffeine can even stimulate the production of adrenaline. And that Mm -hmm. can make your heart rate increase as well. And give you that more awake response. Gotcha. Okay. So there really is a lot going on. Not just one little thing that caffeine is doing. It it can cause a few different changes in our bodies. Wow. That's that's crazy. Yeah. So there's this simple piece to it, or maybe not simple, but very easy to understand. It inhibits our adenosine receptors, but also there are other things going on as caffeine gets processed in your body, maybe by enzymes breaking it down in your liver. So there are other responses going on as well. And I think Mm -hmm. that's true 
for everything. There's a lot that happens, but I thought it was fun that there's this extra piece too that goes on as well. Yeah. Dang. It's pretty cool. That's really cool. I did not know that. Like, especially that second half of stuff, the three other things it does. I had no idea. So that's kind of a shorter one than normal, but I do think it's important for us to know that organic molecules are everywhere and chemistry plays a role in so much, even our fun caffeine intake. And if you want to give us a review on that, then I've got a few more even fun facts for you on this topic. So (laughs) there's a reward in it. (laughs) Excellent. I'm ready. Okay. So in our brains, there's always this game of musical chairs going on. (laughs) And normally we start to get to the end of the day and adenosine starts making its way toward the chairs. So the music stops, so to speak, as, Mm -hmm. as any professional or amateur uh, musical chairs player would know. And (laughs) so professional music chair players. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Okay, cool. Right. Uh, I don't want to undermine their profession. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't know. So, what would happen though if you had the game going and then some people snuck into the game? Mm. So suddenly, whereas normally it's like only a few chairs too few. Mm-hmm. So a couple people get out every time, every round of musical chairs. Caffeine and his or her buddies sneak in to the game. Mm-hmm. Start getting closer to the end of the day or even I guess just during the day. We feel tired in the day too, but music stops and caffeine swoops in and sits in some of the chairs. That's right. Yeah. And then adenosine's like, oh man, I guess, huh, no chairs for us. And so rather than it being like it totally did anything to the adenosine, it just took the spot that the adenosine was right. trying to get to in our brains. Yes. Or the receptors, which would be a better, the, the actual word. So yes. then we don't feel the tiredness that we actually are as much because the adenosine wasn't able to tell our body that we are tired. That's right. That was a good explanation. I had that one brewing. I was like, there's something there, some game or something that's like, kind of <laughs> reminded me of. Like, I've got to figure that out. And then the bonus elements to this that I can't really think of a good analogy for are that caffeine also, when it goes to our liver, mm-hmm. is broken down into some different molecules where some some elements are shaved off or whatever and starts to circulate through our bodies and has three different effects that I hope I can remember. The first is that it increases oxygen mm-hmm. delivery to the rest of our body. Oxygen and nutrient flow to the brain. To the brain specifically. Okay. Maybe to the rest of the body too, but that is the American Chemical Society only clarified to the brain. And brains love oxygen. So that makes sense. They love it. (laughs) (laughs) And then also increases our heart rate. Mm -hmm. Right. And that one, that one can can have the adrenaline effect as well. Like it can increase the amount of adrenaline. I actually wasn't clear on what increased the adrenaline, Mm -hmm. but it just said caffeine can stimulate the production of adrenaline. Mm. That was the exact wording. Stimulate the production. Okay. I worried that if I went down the rabbit hole of how do each one of these distinct things Mm -hmm. do each of their jobs. Right. It Mm -hmm. would be a little too murky. And I kind of wanted to keep this clean cut focused on organic molecules having impacts in our body. Totally. And each of those would be so, so anatomy, biology, if we, right. And be their own episode or something. If you went, yeah. It would probably not be fun or worth it to try to fit it into one episode. And then the last one is uh, about it increasing or signaling to our body to, burn fat at a higher rate. Yeah. It said it could increase the rate of fat breakdown to fuel muscle activity. Got it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, really. (laughs) Was that all three of those? That was all three of those. And their names were. Theobromine. I just want to make sure I get these right. 
theobromine, pirazithine, and theobiline. I think. Nice. Not 100% sure on the pronunciation, but pretty sure that's right. And we'll link to our sources so that you can see those for yourself if you want. And there's mm -hmm. a really cool video from the American Chemical Society that talks about this as well. Nice. Here's a little bit more, though. Here are your fun facts for the for the week. Awesome. I'm ready. Because you did great. You, you deserve them. You, <laughs> you earned them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like, I mean, I'm always interested in every topic, but caffeine and coffee, um, obviously... Caffeine's a big part of coffee, so I'm way interested, especially in this kind of topic. So all the fun facts you have, I'm ready. Awesome. Okay. Well, we talked a few weeks ago on the alcohol episode that the dose makes the poison. Right. Caffeine can be poisonous. Oh, man. Right. So... If you go over about 400 milligrams of caffeine, so that's about three cups of coffee, and there is not a time frame for how quickly you did this, so I assume you're just slamming back three cups of coffee. Before the caffeine you already drank can leave your body, I guess, like if you did it that Maybe. fast? Okay. Maybe. They said 400 milligrams is about the safest average dose for adults. Okay. That's about three cups of coffee. It becomes toxic at 10 grams, so that's 75 cups of coffee. Oh, wow. That would be a lot, mm -hmm. but they do now have caffeine pills, so I think if you took all those caffeine pills at once, that would be more dangerous. You're not probably mm. likely to just slam back 75 cups of coffee. That's true. Well, then, like, I mean, some energy drinks have the amount of caffeine as multiple cups of coffee, so I guess mm -hmm. depending on... How fast you chug those, you could, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be close to 75, but it'd still be pretty high. Right. So 400 is the optimal. Above that, you maybe start to have the adverse effects, feeling bad, jittery, et cetera. And then it becomes toxic at 10 grams. A lot of different adults, though, that's, a, that's an average. So mm -hmm. I think if you have a larger body mass, mm -hmm. you probably can take more than if you have a very small body mass. So maybe a... Very small adult, four foot ten, no body fat at all, is going to have a faster reaction than someone who's like six foot tall or whatever. Right. Okay. Got it. So, and I know between men and women, metabolism can differ. So there's also possibly something with that. So that's an average. So don't think I can take 10 grams of caffeine and, you know, don't, yeah. don't be getting <laughs> crazy. Right. That's just an average. The next thing I thought was really interesting is if you drink coffee more often, the brain can make more adenosine receptors. And that's why you can build up a tolerance to the effects of caffeine and you may need more and more coffee is because your brain is making more adenosine receptors. That's why Jam can have a cup of coffee before he goes to bed. Mm -hmm. And Melissa can not do that or <laughs> she'll be awake for a while. Yeah, that's so funny. I was drinking a cup of coffee editing uh, an episode last night and was drinking the coffee all the way up until finishing the episode, finished the coffee, closed my computer, went to bed. It was just perfect. It's like, I need this fuel while I'm doing this, but that yep. makes sense. I've wondered that. I mm -hmm. wonder if it was like, am I just less sensitive to it? Like, how is it that my body could, could be so different from somebody else's? Some people, we have a mutual friend named Ryan who the amount of caffeine this is in decaf coffee is enough for him like it makes a big difference for him and he cannot have a regular cup of coffee at all it just way too strong for him that's so crazy that it can be so different maybe he just doesn't have enough adenosine receptors maybe yeah they, so they get all get inhibited really quickly yeah we should get him some of those some more <laughs> i think he gets them by building up his immunity okay well he's got some work to do <laughs> and then my last fun fact that I thought was interesting is coffee can also make you feel happier because caffeine can inhibit dopamine reabsorption. So dopamine, I don't know all the ins and outs of the details of what dopamine does, but it can give you that happy feeling. Mm. And so caffeine can r inhibit that being reabsorbed. So it's hanging out more in your brain. So then you're going to feel happier. Huh. 
thing. There's so many like different facets to caffeine's effect on our bodies. I just should not expect that. I know. Yeah. I think it helps that it has this basic structure that there's a lot of things that are similar to that in our bodies already. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We know that one little thing can change a lot if we change on organic molecules. So, yeah. Huh. It's pretty cool, huh? That's very cool. Man, I love it. Yay, coffee. Yay, caffeine. Yay, seeing friends at coffee shops safely with masks on. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying I should have like maybe lower my cup of the coffee a day from 75 to like 70 or so <laughs> no don't come anywhere near the 10 grams we don't know how it will affect your individual body <laughs> got it so that can I maybe mean, like 60 cups instead or something like that i'm just trying to get um, a yeah, good gauge 60 is probably safe okay no i'm just kidding don't no one should be drinking 60 cups of coffee a day i'm sure that would have a lot of negative <laughs> effects on you besides the toxicity of it <laughs> yeah i definitely don't get anywhere close to that i don't know you probably do six <laughs> At a certain point, you'd also get close to the amount of water that is like mm -hmm. dangerous for you too. Like there's a lot Probably of things that be so. going down. And if someone adds something to their coffee, then they'd be getting like a ton of sugar or, you know, milk or whatever more than they should have. So all kinds of things I'm sure would start going wrong. <laughs> oh, definitely. Okay, great. Well, celebrating coffee, I also want to celebrate something else. Oh, yes. This week I logged into our hosting platform. And I was looking at something specific for our downloads and suddenly realized that we had crossed the border into 100,000 total downloads. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Like, I couldn't believe it. So hard to fathom. I was really hoping it was actually going to happen a lot closer to the one year mark, too, because we're getting, mm -hmm. we were getting close, but it was not close enough to happen like on August 1st or whatever. Right. But yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, yeah, and I just wanted to take a minute to thank our listeners. I, I try to communicate to you guys a lot that this show wouldn't exist without you and that it has meant so much to me to renew my joy in science communication and to help me feel like I have reached my goals. I'm, I'm living out my science communication dreams and my chemistry education dreams, and I'm so thankful to Every single one of you who've ever clicked on the download button to get us to that 100,000 number. And I don't think numbers matter as much. I love also our, our interaction, but I think that's just a milestone that shows that people are enjoying this and benefiting from this and want to learn chemistry, which is so encouraging and exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah. It is just like a number, but it has definitely a correlation to how many of you guys are listening and we've gotten a lot of just fun feedback and fun messages and great questions and ideas from you guys. And if we were counting those, it might be even a better metric. Right. It's just kind of weird to think that some combination has been downloaded 100,000 times. That is just so right. nuts. <laughs> right. And beyond my wildest dreams, I never thought that would happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I was excited for our first 100 downloads. I was amazed that <laughs> even 100 people wanted to learn anything. So or 100 episodes were listened to so i think that that is really really cool so yeah i wanted to say that and also along a similar vein i now have a place to sit <laughs> <laughs> i had Good. an office yeah i have a place to be <laughs> um i had an office where i was for a long time but it was on borrowed time we mm -hmm. didn't have a chemistry ed faculty member but a chemistry education expert has joined the team at my school in our department and mm -hmm. she has a lab now so I can go and be in that lab and have a desk and office space nice and I'll be able to record in there I think for the foreseeable future and I should be able to stay sitting there through the rest of my grad school experience so I found a permanent home and that's very exciting to me <laughs> awesome and hopefully we can both record there once we uh, can be together and recording in person safely hopefully so so that's very exciting i have a space and i can keep recording and don't have to move around every single week and keep making more episodes and hopefully get to two hundred thousand. heck yeah what about you do you have a fun happy thing we've shared a lot already we shared about coffee we shared about a hundred thousand yeah it's just a good news episode yeah mine is a short one but i had a pretty big project that i've been working on the past two weeks for work 
um, in my, my marketing business, which is what I do when I'm not podcasting with Melissa. And right. it was one of the more significant projects I've had since, since having my own business working for myself and mm -hmm. wrapped it up and was really proud of where it, it ended. It was about a two and a half week or so project, I think, give or take. And one, on one hand, it's just like a relief to kind of have something like that done and feel like, okay, great. It's, it's done. And I can kind of rest a little bit and also just feeling like it's also great that I had a project that was, that was pretty big like that. So yeah, in general, just feeling kind of good about that and glad that that's over and also just glad that I got to do it at all. Woohoo. Well, congratulations. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. Pretty fun. It's been fun to follow your progress from leaving your full-time job to deciding to become a freelancer to now having some success in building your business. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. It's definitely like keeps me on my toes for sure. Cause now I'm like, okay, but I hope I do hope another big project comes soon. Right. Or some several small ones or whatever, but it's just like, there's always that level of it. But in general, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic for sure. Well, thanks Jam for taking time away from your freelancing stuff to come hang out and podcast with me. And thanks to all of you listeners for caring enough to learn about chemistry a hundred thousand times. That <laughs> is amazing. Well, thanks for teaching us that many times. Obviously it helps this recorded so you don't actually have to teach every single time, <laughs> but right. thanks for teaching us, especially such a cool topic like caffeine. And Melissa and I have a lot of ideas like that, but we want to hear from you ideas you have about chemistry in your everyday life. So if you have any of those, you can reach out to us on Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem, F-O-R, your life to share your thoughts and ideas. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the costs of making it, go to ko-fi.com slash chem for your life and donate the cost of a cup of coffee. Coffee, caffeine. Mm -hmm. give, give our <laughs> podcast a little bit of caffeine. Um, if you aren't able to donate, you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app and rating and writing a review on Apple Podcasts. That also helps us to be able to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. References for this episode can be found in our show notes or on our website. Be sure to check out Beth's Brain Bites on Instagram as well. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Hefner and S. Flint, who reviewed this episode.